Hey, what's going on guys? It's DK. Back at you with another video here to break down the two-game NBA playoff slate on Wednesday. If this is your first time watching, welcome to my channel. I cover DraftKings NBA Top Shot prize picks and SuperDraft. SuperDraft is the sponsor of today's video. You can use the discount code DKDFS for a $50 match and a $50 deposit. Um... You can see they got my logo there. So uh, make sure to take advantage of that. They do have player prop uh, stuff. You can run up to 20 extra money there. They also have multiplier contests, which are really, really fun. And yeah, take advantage of that free money, guys. So again, DKDFS, Super Draft, uh, super excited to be working with them. And if you are looking for more in-depth content for DFS, I do uh, offer that on Patreon.com, NBA, USFL, and Esports Package. We had a great week for USFL. Um, we've been doing very well in the playoffs. Um, so check that out if you're interested in that, but really quick, let's, let's take a look back out of here from tonight. So tonight is just all tilting for me, just all, uh, just so many things we got to cover. Like a two game slate, it could have been a notebook slate, right? Just, just the amount of stuff that happened tonight. I am an incredible amount of pain. Um, so let's start with the Miami game. Um, we, there, there was a lot of indications that we, we might see Duncan Robinson in the rotation. So that obviously made Max Struess a pretty bad play with that news, right? Um, and possibly Caleb Martin playing too. And sure enough, you get Max Struess, a shooting guard, goes for like 15 rebounds, doesn't miss a three. I end up rolling the dice in Duncan Robinson. I mean, it wasn't my smartest decision, but I was like, you know what? Why not? I'm just going to try it. He's going to be super low owned. Maybe hopefully, you know, Struess struggles like he's been struggling all, all uh, series. And Struess can't miss. Again, he gets like 20 rebounds. Um, so that was tilt number one. Um, number two, you had, uh, massive chalk Oladipo. I originally had fallen into like three steals. Like there's a clear foul and they hacked him bead, uh, and the face. Um, and they just don't call it. The ball just like stops Oladipo, just picks it up and puts it in like four points right there for chalk Oladipo. Why not? Um, and then to top it all off, Gabe Vincent, massive chalk Gabe Vincent, is busting, um, and then plays the entire fourth garbage time and smashes in garbage time. So, oh, oh, and then one more. I forgot about this. How about P.J. Tucker? How about that? I played him last slate. No way. Massive foul trouble and a complete bust. Finally fade P.J. Tucker. Almost a triple-double. Has like eight assists, five boards, knocking down threes, some steals and blocks too. Why not? Just, ugh, uh, it hurts. Uh, I'm so much pain from the first game. And the second game, I played DeAndre Ayton. Two quick fouls, I'm, th I'm thinking, okay. You know, the, the two quick fouls in Ayton is very unlucky, but at least I have McGee, so he's going to get extended run. Ah. Bismack Biumbo, dust him off. I was talking about that in the Discord. I was like, if I see Bismack Biumbo come out, rip off his warm-ups, for Aiton, I'm going to be so pissed. And sure enough, we saw it. And I was just like, you know what? It might be time for bed. <laughs> so, yeah, Biombo in the rotation over McGee. Uh, just incredibly dumb from Monte Williams. Uh, deserves to lose for that. And then one more thing. Um, I, I liked Mikel Bridges over Jay Crowder. Uh, but when I uh, moved a couple things around and full stacked uh, the late game, I actually couldn't afford Bridges. So I had to go to Crowder. Crowder gets in massive foul trouble. So massive chalk Cam Johnson comes in and gets way more extended run. Just like I said, I am in so much pain tonight, guys. So yeah, we can go over my lineup really quick, but it's it's going to be an L for me. Again, I played Duncan Robinson stacked up this Dallas Phoenix team. Luca surprisingly low owned. He's off to a pretty solid start. Um, again, Crowder foul trouble. Biombo in the rotation over McGee. Uh, Chris Paul once again struggling. Um, Aiden's fine. Cleb is fine, but... It's going to be an L. Uh, we might go four for four on prize picks, though. We'll see if Jake, if Paul goes over eight assists, Booker goes under, and then Aiden continues to, to score the ball. Might go four for four there. So that could salvage the night, but just an incredibly tilting night for myself. And what's even more tilting, too, is this will be the last day I'll be able to play DFS for like four or five days. So I'm going out of the country for a wedding, so I won't be able to play DFS. That is just... What am I supposed to do without DFS? I guess I'll have to socialize a bit. So, um, yeah, let's talk about this two-game slate. But again, this will be the last slate I personally will be able to play until Monday. So, 
I'm not looking forward to no DFS for a few days. But um, all right, we'll start off with Milwaukee and Boston. So Milwaukee at the top, we have Giannis and Combo. I mean, I don't have to tell you he's a good play, right? He's going to play 40 plus minutes. He's going to do everything for the team. He did a five fouls last game. However, didn't uh, picked up a, a majority of those in the fourth quarter. I will just mention again, Boston's been doing a decent job trying to take some chargers on him. So there's, you have to factor in the possibility of him getting in foul trouble. But uh, if he says he's out of foul trouble, he's the best bend up on the slate. And then Drew Holiday, I like. I mean, he has not shot well. Like, look at the last four games. 8 of 20, 7 of 20, 11 of 30, and 5 of 22. And he's still putting up, like, 45 fancy points a game. So when we get a decent shooting game from Drew Holiday, he has a 50-plus fancy point ceiling game in him. So for those reasons, I like Drew quite a bit. Portis is basically out of play. Uh, they've been phasing him out of the rotation this series, so I'm not going to play it. I'm not going to pay 5-5 five, five for Portis. He's only going to play 15 minutes. Lopez, I don't mind at 4-8. He'll play 25 to 30 minutes. He's just like Kyle Anderson, slow uh, you know, slow motion out there. It's so funny watching him and slow motes and Kyle Anderson. I don't know who's slower when they're on the court. Uh, they both move in just complete slow motion. But, yeah, 25 to 30 minutes. Most likely will get you around 25 fancy points. 4-8 feels a little bit of underpriced for Brook Lopez. Um, Grayson Allen, Pat Connaughton. So Connaughton get a, did get a little bit banged up at the uh, end of the game last game. So keep an eye on that. But I expect both these guys to be in the neighborhood of around 30 minutes. We saw 30 minutes last game for Connaughton. Grayson Allen's been playing, you know, 25 to 30 minutes. Now Allen's been struggling where Connaughton's been playing well. And now they're about the same price point. So in tournaments, I might slightly prefer Allen actually to Connaughton. Uh, but both guys are firmly, firmly in play here for value. I'm not super excited about playing Wes Matthews, but he'll play close to 30 minutes. Most likely he's going to get you like around 10 fancy points. He had a decent game last game, but I would say that's more of an outlier. And that's really it for Milwaukee. Moving on to Boston. So uh, Boston, you guys knew last game, I, I preferred Tatum over Brown in tournaments. That worked out in a big, big way. You also did have some Jalen Brown foul trouble. But yeah, Tatum's at 9-6, Brown's at 8-3. Um, Tatum should play around 40 minutes. Brown should play 38 to 40 minutes. I think both look pretty good here. Um, maybe a lean now to Brown actually over Tatum. If Tatum gets more ownership after that big game and Brown gets less because of when he chalked, when he was a bust at massive ownership, then now I might actually prefer Jalen Brown. It just comes down to what the ownership is going to be. Um, so we'll see. I, I would say it's going to be relatively similar to both players, but um, yeah, they, they both look pretty similar to me. And then Al Horford, I mean, I've been playing him every single game, been taking his over in prize fix every single day. He's made me a ton of money. Um, now, yeah, I don't think we're going to get 50 fancy points uh, like we have back-to-back -back games here for Horford. But if he stays out of foul trouble, he should play, you know, 35 to 40 minutes. Now, keep an eye on the Robert Williams news. Obviously, if Robert Williams is out, that's going to be like it's going to make me like Horford uh, more. And then, yeah, we'll talk about Robert Williams himself. So if he plays, I expect somewhere in the neighborhood of 22 to 25 minutes, which makes him a fair play. Could get a little bit more if he get foul trouble for one of Grant Williams or Horford. Um, but yeah, if Robert Williams is out, you're going to, you know, see. 40-ish minutes for Horford, and then, you know, most likely 30-plus minutes from Grant Williams. However, he got in foul trouble. They actually went to Derek White last game. So um, we'll keep an eye on the Robert Williams um, play. And then Marcus Smart, I liked him as a low-owned play uh, last late. He paid off in a big way. He played 41 minutes. Um, you know, ownership is definitely going to increase on him after that last game, but I still expect as many minutes as possible for Marcus Smart here, right? He played 41 minutes. So as long as there's no foul trouble, I think Smart makes a pretty safe play there. Um, Grant Williams, like I said, a four, six, whether Rob Williams plays or not, I still expect, you know, summer in the neighborhood of around 30 minutes, which makes him a fair value play. He also might be uh, pretty low owned after busting at high ownership last slate. And then Derek white, if Rob Williams plays, I'm not going to go there. If Rob Williams misses, uh, then there's a chance. There's an opportunity for Derek white to play more. He played 34 minutes last game. I don't know if we get that, that amount of run again from Derek white, but at least we know that's possible. So it would make him in consideration. Tice only played 10 minutes. He also shot 0 of 5. That's not going to help his his chance for, for playing more. Now, I do think there's at least, uh, if there's no Rob Williams, there's a possibility that, Der that uh, Daniel Tice plays a bit more, but nothing more than a dart throw right now in tournaments. And then finally, we have Golden State and Memphis. So um, with the top three guards, once again, Steph's my favorite option. He's just the highest floor and highest ceiling. Um, no issue going to Steph here. Again, he should play 38 to 40 minutes. Like him at the top. Clay Thompson, more of a contrarian play. Should be low owned. Has not shot well this series. Had the one decent shooting game two games ago. But other than that, he's been shooting like 20% from the from the field, which is not great. Uh, but he's still going to play huge minutes. So we, you should get, you know, 38 to 40 minutes from Clay Thompson, which I think makes him, again, playable in a tournament setting. Jordan Poole won't play as many minutes. I think we get, you know, 32 to 34, somewhere in that neighborhood. But he'll be relatively productive when he's on the court. And he is sub 7K, which I think makes him a fair contrarian play. Draymond Green at 6'2 has been a little bit quiet of late. Uh, minutes haven't been as high in him. You know, played 33 minutes last game. So I'm expecting, you know, 32 to 34 minutes, somewhere in that range. A guy that, you know, can, can, 
yeah, can contribute in a lot of different ways, which makes him a fair play. And then Wiggins played a lot last game. I'll uh, play 39 minutes again. He's one of their better perimeter defenders without Gary Payton. So I think he's a relatively safe play. Um, Andrew Wiggins, he's been rebounding the ball at a good rate as well this uh, series. Otto Porter, 4-2. Um, I'm expecting around 25 minutes. From him. He's played very well. Um, he's been shooting the ball well too. So um, I think he's a decent value play there. Um, you know, you might still get Kaminga starting, but he only played the first shift and that was it. So it would be a little bit hard to prioritize Kaminga, even if he starts more of a, you know, tournament dart throw. Looney, been playing the backup five, has played relatively well in 17, 15 minutes. I think he's an okay option, but I would rather take a shot in Adams and the other side, who I think plays a bit more. All right, so let's move, let's finish up with Memphis. Uh, sadly, again, John Morant looks like he's out for the playoffs. So Memphis chances of winning this series are basically none, but they could win this game at home. So without uh, John Morant, I mean, Triple J, Bain, Brooks, Tyus all look pretty good. Triple J, uh, I think, has the highest ceiling if he can stay out of foul trouble. He did stay out of foul trouble last game, played 34 minutes, and we saw the type of upside he has. Five blocks, two steals. Again, though, with Jaron Jackson, you always had to factor in uh, the foul trouble risk. I played him at low ownership last night. Now, if he's going to be relatively popular, that's what I'm going to hop off. So we'll see uh, what, I, what I think the ownership is going to be on Jaron Jackson. Like I said, I always want to play him at low ownership. Never want to play him at high ownership. We talk about how bad Dylan Brooks was. I mean, absolutely awful. 5 of 19. But it's hard not to go back there just because he's going to be a black hole and shoot the ball a ton. I um, did have 8 assists too, which was good to see. Um, so I like Dylan Brooks a good amount here at 5.6. I think that's too cheap. Desmond Bain is really not look like himself. He's just not moving well out there. It's so it's tough because obviously there's a lot more usage going on about John Morant, but like he is really just not looking like himself. So I think he's still like a, a decent option, but I would rather uh, I feel a little bit better about Brooks or even Triple J. And then Tyus Jones uh, probably will be one of the most popular plays in the slate again, uh, but for good reason. He should play big minutes. I would say at least 35 or so. Um, so I like Tyus quite a bit uh, at that price point. Below that, Clark's minutes have been down. I will say no one's going to play Brandon Clark after 17 to 12 minutes in back-to-back -back games. However, if Jaron Jackson does get in foul trouble, you could see a bit more run for Brandon Clark. So I think he's still in play as a tournament option. Same with DeAnthony Melton, who was massive chalk last game, only played nine minutes. Now, it's going to be really interesting to see what the ownership is on him. Right? He was like 50 plus percent in high stakes um, and only played nine minutes. But... I think if he comes off the bench and plays well, there's a chance he plays 20 to 25 minutes. So um, I don't hate going to Melton in tournaments. Obviously, there's a risk. Obviously, it's not a good time to get a DNP in the second half. But I'm not convinced he's just going to be out of the rotation here without John Morant. So I think he's an interesting tournament play at much, much low ownership. Uh, Slow-mo had a really good game in 23 minutes. I would say that's an outlier. Shot 7 of 8 at 2 steals and a block. I think he's a fair play. I think we get, you know, low 20s minutes, but probably a bit of an outlier game last game. And Steven Adams, it really surprised me how many minutes he played. 27 minutes for Steven Adams was shocking. I thought he was going to get somewhere in like 15, maybe 20, but he played 27 minutes. Now, I don't know if we get 27 minutes again here from Steven Adams, but to be honest, you don't need him to play 27 minutes. If you get 15 to 20 minutes from Adams at 3-4, it still makes him a fair, like a solid value. And if he plays more like he did last game, um, he's probably going to break the slate. So... Um, I think Adams looks great at the price point. Uh, again, it was really surprising how much he played, but looks like the Grizzlies are going to stick with Adams. And then Zaire Williams, 3-3, played 18 minutes last game. Really nothing more than a dart throw. Uh, could be an extended run if, you know, Brooks or Bain get in some foul trouble. But, yeah, that's really it for uh, Memphis, guys. And that's going to wrap it up for the video as well. So, again, if you do enjoy this, make sure to like um, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell as well. But appreciate you guys as always, and I'll see everyone in the next video.